there are three things in life that you cannot avoid. Death, taxes, and bugs in code. No matter how good of a programmer you are, you're bound to find errors and bugs somewhere. But you need to know about these errors for you to debug them, right? That's where error screens come in. Error screens tell the user what went wrong in the code and normally where to report it to. For example, I see this one quite often. Thanks, Magix. Video game consoles are no different, but generally, things shouldn't go wrong with them. So, when something does go wrong, it gets stuck in people's minds, and then it morphs into horror. This is the horrifying world of game console errors. Let's start with a classic. Once Microsoft entered the video game market in 2001, competing with Sony's PlayStation 2 and Nintendo's GameCube with the original Xbox, things needed to be amped up for the next generation. So the big battle between Sony and Microsoft began, and each needed to figure out ways to one-up each other. As we know now, however, these two companies pretty much stalled on the starting line. Disregarding Nintendo's 7th gen release, the Wii, picking between these two consoles was trying to pick between the better of two evils. On Sony's side, they amped up their new system, the PS3, to the extreme, having a new cell microprocessor in the system, co-developed by IBM, Toshiba, and Sony themselves. The cell microprocessor was indeed powerful, as Sony had intended, but the architecture, according to game developers, was insanely difficult to code for. And given the fact that the PS3 was going for $500 for the lower end 40GB model and $600 for the 60GB, it felt like you were just paying for an expensive paperweight. So it made sense that Microsoft would have been victorious, right? Well, not really. You also pretty much got a paperweight unless you were really lucky. While the Xbox 360 had much cheaper introductory prices, $300 and $400, the launch consoles all came with a fatal flaw. The hardware. According to Microsoft themselves in a 2021 documentary, the main issue with the consoles were cracked solder joints, which connected the GPU to the substrate interposer. Whatever that is. This itself was caused by the thermal stress of being turned on and getting hot, and then turned off and getting cool. Good job, boys. The way Microsoft intended for errors to be seen and interpreted by the user would be through the rings on the front of the console, outside of the power button. There are four rings, and in normal play, only one of these rings would be lit green to indicate that the console was up and running. But if they turned red, there'd be an error. If there was one ring, there'd be a hardware failure with an error code on screen. If there were two rings, the console would be overheating and would need to cool down. If there were three rings, and this was the most common, there'd be a general hardware error with one or more components failing. This doesn't have an error code. And if there were four rings, that means you didn't connect the AV cable. Which is funny. Imagine seeing a red ring of death and freaking out only to have it be that you forgot to plug the video cables in. Because of the defective soldering, many launch consoles would show these red rings, and people began to post about them online, thus dubbing them the red rings of death echoing Windows' blue screen of death. Microsoft can't seem to do anything right, can they? Of course, as time moved on and 360 evolved, the consoles got better, but in later models, rings didn't exist, and all you had was a single LED. So if that turned red, you'd have no clue what the error was. But nonetheless, the red ring of death is still one of the most infamous game console error screens of all time, thanks in part to the early YouTube comedy. While not as detrimental to the system, the PlayStation 2 had a freaky error screen and potentially even as famous. Obviously, there isn't a console that can just play any game from any console, so you must play Wii games on a Wii, Xbox games on an Xbox, and PlayStation games on a PlayStation. But what happens if you decide to rebel and try to play, I don't know, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball on your PlayStation 2? Well, you'd be met with this, a standard PS2 startup. And as it moves in and you expect it to fade into nothingness, you get met with a negative sound, red colors, and an ominous message. Please insert a PlayStation or PlayStation 2 format disc. Spooky, I know. Now, not a lot of people might have just randomly stumbled upon this error screen, because generally not a lot of people are going to try and put a PC or Xbox game disc into their PlayStation. But sometimes, curiosity gets the best of us, and that's probably why this screen is so famous. It of course has its own name, the red screen of death because apparently that's the general way to name error screens, just you get a color, an object, and then add of death to the end. But hey, 
it works. And as a little fun fact, the original PlayStation also had an RSOD message too, but only on certain models. Much like the PS2 variant, you first will have a normal first half of the boot up sequence, until it suddenly changes to this screen. Please insert a PlayStation format disc. This one is even creepier in my opinion, as it goes from the QT jingle of the PlayStation 1 to absolute silence with an ominous red screen. But of course, this only happens on SCPH-10X models of PS1s, so you may never see it, but who knows? Curiosity did kill the cat after all. This one isn't really well known, but when I first saw it, it absolutely terrified me. The Wii is such a welcoming system, and that is in part because of how Nintendo marketed the console. It was a family console, a console that you can enjoy alone with friends or even with family. Ever wanted to have a bowling competition with your grandma? Wii was the way, and it was so intuitive that she knew immediately how to play. Motion controls sure were a gimmick, no doubt about that, but the Wii implemented them so well that it became a need. Sure, you're not going to be playing any GTA or COD or DOA XVB on it, but the console itself has so many more fond memories. It was the outlier in the 7th gen console wars, both because of its intuitiveness and as well as its reliability. Unlike the PlayStation 3 or the 360, it actually worked and people wanted to make games for it. But what happens if something does go wrong? Well, if the system files ever get corrupted, instead of the typical health warning message you would get when you start up the Wii, you get this, a black screen with nothing but white text. The system files are corrupted. Please refer to the Wii Operations Manual for help troubleshooting. Imagine starting up your Wii, wanting to play some Wii Sports or New Super Mario Bros. Wii, and you just get met with this screen without warning. That absolutely horrifies me. Although, don't panic too hard, this error screen probably won't ever appear on your Wii anytime soon. But if you are a modder, hacker, homebrewer, whatever, you might be more prone to this message appearing although it can apparently be easily fixed. But you know what, I think you can bundle all the error screens into this category, even the disc could not be red error as well. Those all have the same vibe and they also horrify me. I had the latter error happen with Mario Party 8 a long time ago. Truly terrifying. This is not a common error, at all, but it is so horrifying that I had to include it. The PS1 or PSX or the OG PlayStation, whatever you want to call it, is a retro console now. Which basically means that modders and hackers have free reign over the system to do whatever the hell they want with it. But with that, it can also have its consequences. One of the more popular mods to do is to mod chip the system. This basically means that you are putting a chip or a board into the system to circumvent certain features that the company doesn't want you to do. Like for example, play non-official games. But that also has a side effect. You see, when you circumvent the piracy checker within the PS1, you open up a new can of worms. Because it'll just read what's on the disc and execute instructions, which can lead to some interesting results. These results are dubbed Fearful Harmony. Take a listen. That is horrifying, not only to see, but to hear. Another one of these errors is called Personified Fear, and it has a shorter lifespan, but a creepier outcome in my opinion. This one actually happens with a corrupted BIOS or game disk, so it could be more common, but I've never gotten it to occur. Maybe I just don't have the right model of PS1. Although to be honest, I don't know if I want to see any of this. I'm grouping these together because they both have the same kind of vibe to me. The Nintendo 64 DD, or disk drive, was one of Nintendo's many failures but it came with a standalone, somewhat BIOS for the 64. But God forbid something goes wrong, otherwise you'll be met with this lovely sound. 
And by the way, the message just says to look at the instructions booklet. So yeah, descriptiveness wasn't a necessity for these messages. Apparently this error code 41 means that the DD or expansion deck may not be connected properly, according to a YouTube commenter. And I trust YouTube commenters with my life. In a similar vein, the GameCube had its own little add-on later to its life, the Game Boy Player. This would allow you to play your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games on the big screen. But again, god forbid you put the disc in and forget to plug in the Game Boy Player itself, otherwise... Like, be real with me here for a second, alright? Who thought that really damning piano notes would be a good error sound? For the Game Boy Player, no less! Well, that's a peek into the world of video game console errors, and how horrifying they can be. If you really are interested, you can head over to BK4's YouTube channel, where he has error compilations from basically every console known to man. He's stopped doing them since there haven't been any console releases since the PS5 and Xbox Series X, but if you want a comprehensive list, he's your guy. Also, it was kind of a chore to find some of the videos I needed for this one because of the new genre of kill screen videos. Also, the whole every copy of Mario 64's personalized meme really infected my search results. Anyways, thank you for watching, and have a nice day. See y'all. According to Microsoft themselves in a 2020... Who the f is like getting arrested right now?